Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat, my daily talk. This is episode number 471, and the topic today is when love becomes a job or a duty. I did talk yesterday about um, when love is not enough, and went deeper on that one. This is another version or another layer of that, and it's, there's a lot of stuff brewing I'm going to talk about during this talk, and it's more coming later. Before I get to that, I'll introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find balance and create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And every day around this time, 5 p.m. Pacific time usually, I do a daily broadcast on Facebook Live first, then goes to YouTube and iTunes, and I'll let you know about that later, called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. I've done this every day now, day now for well over a year. That's why today is number 471 episode number. And the talk today, as I said, is about when love becomes a job or duty. And you might be hearing some meowing out of the corner of the screen. That's the cat I've been cat sitting for for the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, but tomorrow will be the last day for, the, for this time. Anyway, totally off topic. Let me get back on track. That's a duty as well, but it's also love to do as well. Hmm, that may come up in the conversation, we'll see. <coughs> so, I've had this... Um, not consideration. I've had this awareness brewing lately and, and, and having some things um, percolate, let's go with percolate, around the topic of love, relationships, etc., etc. And, well, I've done that for several years, actually. But in the last few weeks, I've been considering the idea about aspects of love that aren't so easily talked about. You know, it's so easy to talk about, oh, just the, the beauty of love and romance and everything happening and populating so easily. But when the rubber meets the road, when stuff gets challenging, it's not always easy to talk about this stuff. So today I want to lay this one on you because you may be thinking about the wonderful journey of getting to that relationship or the ring or the wedding. But have you thought about what comes after? Have you thought what, about what happens when the road gets rough, when it gets bumpy, when things get challenging? I'll give you some examples in a moment. I have, in fact, got a whole bunch of stuff brewing, but I'll get to that in a bit too, because that's, that's after this. So let me start with this one. So first of all, when you're in a relationship, and this could be any sort of relationship, not just a romantic relationship, but I'm using this romantic one as the example because it's the one that we probably, of all the relationships we have, choose into more intentionally. Family dynamics, you're stuck with them. Business dynamics, you're pretty much stuck with those too because of the job you chose to do. Um, social engagement with friendships, they come and go so they're more fluid. But romantic relationship is the one you really consciously choose into. So when things don't go the way you planned or the way you want, it's kind of on you. You know, if you're working for a company and you have an issue with one of the people you work with, you can go to somebody else about that. In the family issues, you might end up taking sides, or you might decide to disown your family, or might go to therapy. Some of that you can do in a relationship when it's romantic, but some of it can't be done because it's you and them. There's no third party involved in this, and it's up to you to decide what to do. So let me play with this a little bit more about the job and, um, <coughs> excuse me, duty focus first. For example, if you're in, um, relationship with somebody and they have a family challenge. Hi Sasha, nice to see you my brooker, hang on. <coughs> got a tickle in my throat. <clears> throat. Let me stay on track. So nice to see my brooker, by the way. Okay. Hang on a second, just make sure I clear my throat. If it doesn't go away I'll go grab a glass of water which I'll be gone for a second. Alright. <coughs> hmm. All right. All right. You know what? Hold that thought. I'll be right back. I need to get the water. I didn't bring it out with me, and I'm now choking. So I'll be right back. Stay right there. All right. All right. So I put the mic back on to the reception. Okay. Where was I? So, in a relationship, you're with somebody, and something happens to them. Maybe they have a 
um, a parent die and they go into this pit of despair and grief and upset and unresolvable misery how would you be with them would you choose into that or would it become because because the, the thing about this and I'm going to use this as, an, as a one level we go deeper in a moment where we have relationships that sometimes it's hard to be around because of stuff they're going through and I'm not sure if I can have any answers for you these are going to be questions initially we'll see if I have any answers as we go along one of the things I want to talk about is the say this the opportunity to stay there the opportunity to stay connected versus to walk away because it's tempting sometimes if you have a relationship that isn't necessarily that deep that when something traumatic happens you might want to walk away I do not recommend that but I'll get to them in a moment I want to break this down and, and tease this apart so I'll give you some more insight so first of all when it's a emotional breakdown now another level of that a physical breakdown if your partner say he was in a car crash and was injured And you're in a relationship now. This is, I'm putting the principle in place of if you're in a relationship where you're not at this point married, so there is a certain, let's say this in a polite way, a certain um, flexibility about your commitment. I'll put it that way. What is your line we you don't cross? If your partner is in a car accident and they're injured badly and they need support for a few months or they're they lose a leg or something like that how committed are you and I'm asking this from two points I did say in the title of that when love to becomes a job or a duty meaning that where you actually in a home do something that's against your will and I mean that in that way versus where your love takes you deep enough where you're willing to care for somebody where the circumstances change so dramatically it's almost a different person you're with and it's hard to be around so my question is how do you play with that because sometimes it's and one of the lessons is how do you set up boundaries how do you take care of yourself how do you be self-honoring and still be in the relationship it's not easy stuff I know and those people are popping in and out of the broadcast because it's like they're, they may not be ready for this topic it's a deep one to talk about so in this context of this conversation I wanted to throw some things out for you when you're in a relationship and your partner and this is the thing I'm just seeing, I'm comparing some um, heftiness of weights on this one. So let me, let me throw these two out there. One of them is you're in a relationship and your partner cheats on you. Can you forgive them? One question. Second question is you're in a relationship with somebody who has a um, challenge physically. Maybe it's an illness that takes them out or a heart attack or they get in a car accident and something happens to them physically where they're laid up and they're not able to function properly. At what point are you challenged by that? Is that easy for you? Is one easier than the other one? Is cheating easier than a car accident? I'm putting this out there for intentionally to provoke some thought because frankly, this is stuff we don't talk about. Now, of course, this is a personal experience for everybody. I'm aware of some things from my own, my own life right now where I'm with somebody who's got some challenges and I'm watching my own boundaries where I've not been honoring them, where I've been Overgiving. It's not a romantic relationship, it's a friendship. But it's a place where I am going to watch my own self care and focus on my own business and my own work without being totally becoming an a hole to them. Because this is, the, this, is the, this is the span of this, this is the range of this. So, this is a different course I have to talk about. And I wanted to lay out these ideas and questions for you because you may want to think about these for your own life. Because reality is this stuff I'm talking about, these things I'm talking about are uh, deeper questions than we usually talk about in, these, in my broadcasts and most people in the relationship dating romance mating business don't usually cover these topics but I thought it's time to bring it up so if you're in a relationship with somebody and again let me throw some back on the table for those who have just joined if you're in a relationship with somebody and they cheat on you versus you're in a relationship with somebody who is in a massive car accident where they lose a leg or they're laid up in hospital for a, a heart attack or something like that for a long time which one's easier to accept which was easier to be with. For some people, and they'd rather stay with the whole person who cheats than be with the person who loves them but is injured. Then again, a lot of people are the other way around. So I'm putting these questions out without specific answers to give you a direct, clear answer because this is not an easy one to talk about. But I want to make sure you get some things, some things I want to give you some insights because I wouldn't be doing the broadcast otherwise. 
which is one of the biggest things to learn along the way, and I mentioned this in my own piece about boundaries. And boundaries are an interesting topic. And I haven't talked about them before in many of my broadcasts. So I want to bring them up now because I'm actually writing out um, full disclosure. I'm going to be leading a webinar in uh, 10 days. 10 days, give or take, Wednesday week. That I'll be sending out emails about if you want to find out more about that, message me. Um, it's going to be about, and I haven't got the title yet, but it's going to be the, the webinar is going to lead into a course which is going to be 18 modules about love. And it's going to be love and. And one of the topics is love and boundaries. Well, that's the thing, Gina. Yes, thank you. There, there is no right answer. I, I would say that's the, probably the truth because there's degrees, there's variance, there's um, reflection. Because the reality is sometimes, and for many of us, we don't get tested until something happens. It's not something you plan for. So there is no, you're right, there is no right answer. This is something I'm putting out as provocative because this is one of the modules I'm already starting to think about, which is love and boundaries. And this is one piece I want to mention to you is boundaries because it's such an overlooked topic. And the thing is, for most of us, we've perhaps had some boundary insecurity or some boundaries that are um, too loose because of the way we were raised or because the family we were in or the relationship we had or the paradigm we were living in where we didn't know how to have healthy boundaries. <clears throat> and I don't mean to be a pushover as much as I mean that we don't stand up for ourselves. So this context, this conversation is leading into understanding that our boundaries are something that we don't spend enough time focusing on in our lives romantically, business, socially, anywhere. Yet it's probably one of my biggest pain points in relationships where people's boundaries are not respected. If you're in a relationship with somebody who basically um, steamrolls you because they have demands of what they want to do and don't care about you, your boundaries aren't strong. If you're in a relationship with somebody who doesn't respect what you want and does their own thing, again, it comes back to boundaries. So I'm not going to, again, not giving me all the answers here because I'm still processing this myself and I've got this module I'm writing for my new program. Um, group pro it's a group program coming up soon, so keep an eye out for that. It's, it's a piece of understanding that we don't get very clearly because we're not taught this. And having an understanding about what your interaction level is, your boundary with other people is, that um, personal space energy that happens physically but also happens emotionally, mentally, emotionally, is where it is that you say yes and we say no where you're in and when you say I'm out. Where in the context of what I said earlier, if someone cheats on you, if that's something you had set up beforehand as a, as a, a rule and they did it on you, they violated your boundaries. It's an agreement. Agreements are part of the boundary keeping process. When you keep, when you keep your agreements and you have agreements in place, then you've got established boundaries that are healthy. If you don't have those agreements in place, you tend to find your boundaries are soft as well. So. That's one. The second one I was mentioned back into was if you were with somebody and they have a traumatic injury, and maybe it's something where you're in a relationship with somebody where that person becomes so dependent upon you, you can't stand it. Is your boundary being crossed then? Is your self care secondary to theirs? Well, thank you, Heather. I'm glad you're here for the second time. Thanks for being here. Um, so this is a key thing. So having, having an understanding of your own boundaries, which is sometimes good to do when you're alone, single, to know what you really want, because when it's in a relationship, you're already in mesh, and it's hard to have boundaries when you're already stuck together. You want to have some space, so you can put the boundaries in between. When you come together, it's cleaner, which is part of the challenge. So boundary keeping, boundary maintaining, boundary building, boundary understanding is a big piece of the work that is important to know for having a healthy relationship. And this is not just romantic relationship, by the way. This healthy boundary stuff I'm talking about applies to every area of relationship you have. Family dynamics, especially family dynamics, ex-partner relationships, parent-child relationships, business relationships, social relationships, as well as romantic relationships. All of these areas are impacted by how strong and healthy your boundaries are. And I don't mean the boundaries where they're so strong that they're like, in, like, like the, um, um, I was going to say the Great Wall in... in uh, Game of Thrones, but that was a bit of an interesting reach. But having such, so they're, they're basically impervious. You want boundaries that are strong but flexible, that work with what you want and what you agree to. So boundaries are a vital part of building up your own self-support structure to trust and rely upon yourself so when things happen outside of the boundaries, you can respond versus react. This is a big piece of the work, by the way, and I'm, as I'm speaking about this, I'm going to go back and listen to it myself because this is going to be some of the content I'm going to teach in the module. Self- 
respect is part of, or should say boundaries are part of self-respect. Because if you don't respect yourself, you have no boundaries. When you have boundaries, you're respecting yourself because you're honoring who you are and creating a framework, a structure within which you have safety and honor and respect for yourself. And that you're keeping clear on your mental, emotional, and physical boundaries of what you can and what you will and what not will not play with. Find out what those are for yourself. Getting clear about your own boundaries, your own structures, your own um, rules for life is a powerful, powerful place to grow into and to honor and respect who you are because that um, transformation, that effort will pay dividends if you choose to do it. I'm trying to think of anything else on that one. As I mentioned earlier, this is part of a a program, I'm, a group course, a group program I'm launching um, later this month, later next month, excuse me, next month. They're going to run through the holidays and it's going to be, a, a, it's gonna, I'm not giving you too much detail because I haven't finished creating yet, but it's going to be a game changer for love. Um, I don't have the title fully expressed yet. I've been calling it love and because it's each module is love and something. So love and boundaries is in there. Love and forgiveness, um, love and confidence, love and success love and intimacy i've got a bunch of topics brewing so keep an eye out for that it's coming soon and again if you want to find out more about that reach out to me i'll put you on the list when i announce it formally there'll be um a webinar coming up in about 10 days about this so there's a little plug um if you want to find out more about how to work with me i do invite you to set up time for a chat and you can get on my website which is my name barry selby so the funny way to do it is you go to barryselby.com forward slash chat to sign up for that get on my calendar set up a time work with me thank you gina yes it is exciting. It's uh, my coach and I've been planning on this for a while, and, and yes, we had a long talk, and I just downloaded everything and started writing, writing out the content today. So it's very much in my mind, which is why this talk showed up. <laughs> I've got a feeling there's going to be a few talks coming out that will be part of the content as I sort of write down, make notes, and start expanding what each of these modules are going to be. Cause it's, it's a four month program, so 18 modules. It's going to go deep, and it's going to be 30 people maximum in the program. So it's going to be a very, it's going to be an intimate group. It's going to be good. Anyway, that's the current specs. So anyway, so you notify me, again, barryselby.com forward slash chat. Um, one of the modules I'm going to teach is definitely about self-love as a, as a piece of the principles of love and loving yourself. And I do recommend my self-love practice as part of that. So if you want to check that out right now, you can go to barryselby.com forward slash self-love or one word. Um, and then what else I want to tell you? Tell you. Yeah, I don't, have any, I don't have an opt-in page yet for the webinar that's going to be done next week, so you can check it out then. Just so keep in touch, watch my broadcasts, and watch my Facebook page. Speaking of which, you can watch my Facebook um, live replays on my business page on Facebook, because that's where they're more consolidated, which is, at Barry, which is Barry Selby author on Facebook. You can also watch them on YouTube. I do upload them there. And then my channel there is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And I'm now putting them onto my podcast. I have a podcast on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine. We can listen to the audio versions of these talks. Um, the first 40 are up now. There's more coming. If you go to Messages from the Masculine, in, if you search for that in the podcast, subscribe, download, and join in. Um, with that, I wish you a pleasant evening. And I'm not going to call it homework, but just consider for yourself where your boundaries are strong, where they're weak, and where they're missing. And with that, I'll let you play. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same back channel. Take care of yourselves. Bye.